Good morning. Hi. Is Tux over here? Yes, he is. Come on, let's go get breakfast. It's already 40 degrees. The temperature is shooting up just like they promised. Good morning, sleepy baby. Hi. Hi. Hi, Gray. Good girl. By now you figured out that Johnny has stayed home sick again today. That's the right thing to do. He's still coughing and pretty congested and not back to eating right yet. He's sending emails to his teachers so he can keep up with his work. I'm making another round of bacon for the family and in the process getting dinner prepped to put in the oven this afternoon. I'm making cream cheese stuffed chicken breasts. So Don and I are having one of those conversations this morning that probably a lot of you would love to participate in. I would, I would guess about transportation and Tesla and where things are headed. You know, one of those conversations we don't plan in advance so we don't start recording and then by the time we're done with it, I wish we had recorded most of it. So, right. yeah. Yeah, well basically my, my point is is that um, we're the way that we uh, mobility, how we get around at the start of the this coming decade and then the end of the decade is, is going to be night and day difference. I think the transition will be very noticeable from 2020 to 2030. I mean, there's going to be a lot of changes by 2030. By 2020, you know, sure, some people have Model 3s and maybe a few uh, I-Paces I and, you know, um, the Audi e-trons. You know, there'll be a few on the road, but by the end of that decade, I think there'll be a noticeable number. <coughs> and um, I just uh, think that the, this is the, the key the key decade because, uh, you know, a lot of things are going to change. Is, you know, are the big car companies all going to finally get with it? Or are they going to uh, survive? Uh, you know, I think, <coughs> I think they're going to start falling by the wayside in the next decade. Um, it, you know, it, it, the things are the face of transportation and how we get around is going to change. Uh, uh, the city of Raleigh has done everything they could, all but squash the uh, little scooters. I mean, they the city is totally 100% in the 1920 uh, mindset that you got to get around by car or you got to take a, a big old bus driven by a person. Or you got to take a train, and that's the only way you cannot. Uh, or well, walk. they've given lip service to liking the scooters if they're regulated properly, which meant tax them so bad. What is the tax on them oh, now? Each little scooter is three hundred dollar fee a year. A year, yeah. three hundred dollar fee. And I a told year. Don that I agreed that since they passed that law, which was six weeks ago, maybe yeah, or something, not that, long ago that I'm not seeing back. many scooters around anymore. However, it's also gotten cold. Yeah. So give it till let me let me let you know in April what the scooter activity is, and let's see if it's really squashed it or not. Because they put that tax in right as it got to be cold weather. But I do, I mean, obviously it's an impact. There's not as many scooters, so they're not in as convenient a location. Right. Um, yeah, well, it's $2, a $2 fee. Just to start moving on it well, now. No, no, it's actually really a $3 fee. It's the $2 additional fee caused by the $300 tax. Then the dollar fee that they always had. And then instead of being 10 cents, a minute it's now 15 cents a minute so uh, you know it, it basically uh, if you walk up to a scooter it's going to cost you you know it used to be able to have do the whole ride for two bucks well now it's going to be three bucks just to even think about riding it so uh, you know right honestly the time that Johnny and I tried them out even at the original cheaper fee I wouldn't just casually get on one just for the heck of it to enjoy scenic downtown Raleigh because it was added up really quick. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so. And you were saying some stuff about the light rail again. You, can, I think you oh, can yeah. reiterate your point as to why you think it's a mistake. Right, I just, uh, you know, again, I'm talking about the, de uh, the coming decade, the um, light rail, uh, or more correctly, they're converting an existing rail line that's been around and, and at least... You know that's a somewhat positive. 
that currently runs from the Garner area of North Carolina. And Marianne drives through Garner on her way into downtown. And it's going to run basically up to uh, RTP Durham area. Um, and that that's a viable route if you're going to put a light rail in. Uh, but the point is, is, the first rider isn't ever going to ride it. The first guy who works in Garner and, I mean, lives in Garner and, and has a job in RTP is not going to ride it until 2027. And that's if everything proceeds on plan. Because there are a few land acquisition yeah, right-of-way issues involved. Yeah, well, they involved. have to put stations and stops in and things like that. Well, in that amount of time, I wonder what autonomous buses are doing because I've been reading a book... Uh, um, ludicrous mode it's the story of how elon musk and uh electric cars have changed it's changing transportation and let's tell you what they're working on in china this guy he's actually lived in china uh, uh he's from new zealand um what they're working on in china and they're all in on uh, uh autonomous vehicles uh they could easily have a, be uh, uh deploying autonomous buses in the very near future like you know five years may not be too far away well it'll take longer than that to, to get here but the point is is the handwriting's on the wall you invest billions and billions and billions into light rail and then poof they come by and for a half a million dollars you could get a bus that could pick the people up in front of their door and drop them off in the door of the work, hospital or work. Instead of having to have a car to drive from their home to the bus station and then figure out how to park and dr and then once you get to the other end, figure out how to get from that end to your job. It just, it's just, the I think the planners are a little short-sighted. They probably, I'm totally okay with bus. I just think that rail, if you haven't, or if it isn't already deployed and working for you, I, I would not do it because the same thing about the Boring Company. They're having a big battle up in um, uh, Chapel Hill and uh, Durham. They're going to run a, a, another different light rail from uh, Chapel Hill, the UNC Medical Center, over to Duke, uh, uh, to downtown Durham and Duke. Well, there's this one critical juncture there uh, that... Um, they uh, they just thought oh well we'll just we're just gonna close that well that's the main artery into downtown you can't just close that and say well people will just figure out some other way to go well now they've gotten a lot of pushback so now they're saying oh well what we'll do we'll 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 build a tunnel and the tunnel I I think the paper quoted the tunnel is two it's like only like a half a mile it's gonna be two point four billion dollars yeah I mean, bring in the boring company yeah it's like well, are they asleep. Call? Did you call Elon and ask him how to fix this problem? <laughs> uh, it's like, um, you know, but they're, they they only want to do it the way their granddaddies did it. The granddaddies went down and they laid these railroad tracks. They tore down houses and tore up roads. And that's what they do because that's the only way they understand. Yeah, well, this is the East Coast and not the West Coast. Although I guess I heard that New York put in a thing to the Boring Company to talk about the subway system and what they could do right. i didn't read any follow-up on that well, but so yeah. at least somebody on the east coast knows about the boring company <laughs> what you have to remember when they put the original subway in it was cut and cover they literally took down the buildings dug a trench put the subway in filled in the trench and then built on top of it so that's basically what they're going to have to do uh in, unless they do a tbm or something along that that's what they're going to have to do if they're going to do that tunnel in durham they're pretty much going to have to cut and cover wow one of the other things i said to don was you know not in our lifetime but i'd really like to be a fly on the wall in 150 years oh, yeah. looking back on history yeah. does tesla really get credited with bringing on the ev revolution right. evolution whatever you want to call it did Ford and GM make it or did they die? You know, yeah. who's still around? Who who gets credited with the start of the electric, you know, real surge towards uh, the average person using it? And, you know, I kind of like to separate autonomy from electric cars because it's really two different growth technologies at the same time. Right. The electric car has the computer in it, which makes putting making it autonomous easier than putting the maybe the computer system in an ice-powered car. But they're really two separate things. You can have an uh, 
autonomous ICE car. You can have an electric car that doesn't have any spe special driving capabilities, just drive sort of regular. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Tesla really gets credited with uh, long term. Right, and I think the uh, I've said before, I believe the re one of the reasons the car dealers fight Tesla so hard is because they're really not worrying about Tesla. They're worrying about the Chinese selling cars on the internet. You order your car for ninety nine ninety nine free shipping from China, and uh, that's the thing they're worrying about. And let me tell you, the Chinese they're building cars, electric cars. Uh, there's like um, now you know the guy said uh, I think there's like three hundred and fifty, four hundred, five hundred startups in China. In fact, they've put a law in now that if your startup can't build fifty thousand cars a year, you're going out of business. You're you're done. So um, they only want the Big, serious competitors. Serious uh, electric car companies. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Just saw the ad for this event on Instagram. I follow these guys on Instagram and uh, signed me and Don up to go to it. <clears throat> Although it does affect mine and Michelle's shopping day, should I choose to go. Um, this is very similar to an event that Don and I and Johnny went to last year. And uh, we definitely learned some things. Last year, there was a lot of focus on... Uh, Electrify America and what they were doing. This year's focus is a little different. Um, look forward to going next Tuesday. I stepped outside. I had looked at the thermometer before I did so. And it's a wonderful 62 degrees out here. Now if they could have just added in a little sunshine. Tux is over here in his daytime spot. Pretty happy looking. I'm headed to town, Walmart. Run a few errands. Need to move my plant back outside. Promised myself I would do that when I came out to run errands today. He let me know that he needed to see me. When I carried out the plant, he made the effort to come and see me. Didn't you, buddy? You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. Aww. Hi, sweetheart. More attention? Do you need more attention? You do? I got into Ruby and the center screen's dark. Let me put my foot on the brake. Ah, I got the good old infamous systems are powering up message. I told you guys I've waited and waited and waited on that message and it usually hangs. So I am going to uh, put my foot on the brake and hold in the scroll buttons and uh, reboot. You know, it always takes longer than you think it should, but the T did come up. I could hear the speakers a little bit first, and there's the pin to drive, so I can enter in the pin and leave now. Yep, I'm enjoying the 64 degrees out here. Very much so. This is a little bit of a surprise coming back to Ruby. Maybe I should be glad he parked in front of me because he's protecting me from shopping carts and other vehicles in the parking lot. I guess I'll choose to look at it that About way. The only way I'd really be happy with this situation if it was the Tesla Semi looking to park next to his little sister. I'm home and Dawn's in the garage uh, defrosting the chest freezer and doing some general cleanup work. Not fun stuff. Hey buddy, I figured I'd come see you. How are you doing? Come here. Come here. Come here buddy boo. Oh, big stretch. See, I said Don was clean in the chest uh, freezer, defrosting it. Actually, I'm cooling off in the freezer. <laughs> After you run. <laughs> I'm cooking some Brussels sprouts. And the uh, cheese stuffed chicken breasts are out of the oven and uh, turned out great. 